Voters in Jefferson Parish will be electing a new sheriff on March 24th, Saturday, March 24th. The two men in the race are both veterans with the JPSO. One, the longtime former spokesman, Colonel John Fortunato. The other is the interim sheriff, Joe Lapinto. Both men are here this morning to tell us why they feel they should be sheriff. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in this morning. First of all, uh, 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 a man who knows a lot about politics, uh, former Governor Edwin Edwards, once told me that the two most powerful positions in this state are governor and Jefferson Parish president, uh, Jefferson Parish uh, sheriff, rather. Uh, be that as it may, whether it is or not, uh, this is a very important post. Uh, I want to start out with why you think you should be the sheriff, and then we'll go to, to John Fortunato. It's simple. You know, experience makes a difference in this race. I've represented law enforcement in all three branches of government. I've had the practical experience of being a police officer on the street. I've been the chairman of the Criminal Justice Committee in Baton Rouge, and I've represented our police officers and our sheriff's offices in the courtroom. You know, the sheriff's office is a big business. We have to run it that, like that. My job is to go to work every single day, taking care of the mundane things, but also taking care of what the safety is needed in the Jefferson Parish. You know, I look to people to look at this as a resume. We're interviewing for a sheriff right now. And with any job interview, people would look at a resume. If you look at my resume, you can see that I have the training, the practical experience, and the know-how to make sure I get the job done. All right, Colonel? Well, I've, in the 40 plus years I've spent in the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office working in many different aspects of the organization, I feel that the experience that I have that cannot be taught in the classroom is what I know takes to make the streets of Jefferson Parish safe. I plan on doing a, a lot of things throughout this community, working with the men and women of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, working with parish government, doing the things that we do day in and day out to make sure people in Jefferson Parish feel safe when they go to bed at nighttime knowing the JPSO is out there doing the best that they can. Now, I got to tell you, when I talk to most people in Jefferson, they like both you guys. And they say no matter who wins, they think the parish is, is going to be fine. But the only negatives I think I hear about either one of you is from each one of you about the other. Uh, you're worried about, you, you, you think that, that, that John has, has uh, skirted some campaign financing issues. You have called uh, uh, Sheriff Lepinto in commercials a liar. Well, I mean, I think the record speaks for itself. If you look at the from, the, from the early on, when this started, the coffee shop investigation was the reason that prompted that reply. You know, you have and that's to where be, you were meeting with some people and it was caught on video. I had an opportunity to meet with two former chief deputies uh, that had nearly 100 years of experience combined together. And we were just sitting talking about everything from family to football. And when the, when the matter was first brought to the attention of the sheriff's office, it was, wasn't until December, actually, that my opponent said he didn't know anything about the coffee shop investigation when truth and in fact he was the one that specifically asked the deputy who came in that day and saw us to see if he'd go ask his friend to get a copy of that video. Uh, I think that in itself speaks volumes of the fact that you know without trust there can be no justice. When you say that speaks volumes what do you think it says? Well I think it says that the interim sheriff doesn't believe that he can just go out and say what he wants to say without having any any valid points. I mean the reason why he asked that guy was because he wanted to know specifically what they were going to say. He ordered an internal affairs investigation, which should have been handled independently from another agency, but it wasn't that way. When, he, when these two guys went to internal affairs, and, and as well as the two other guys from the digital forensic unit, they provided statements, and in those statements it plainly said that Sheriff Lepinto had asked that they, uh, you know, uh, get a copy of the video, or, get, or take some pictures of the video, whatever the case may be. All right, quickly, your response? There's no response needed. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't lie about anything. I turned over an internal affairs investigation I'm not required to by law. I have a professional obligation to see if it was a public record or not. They offered. I accepted. They never told me about the video after the fact. But when I receive a public records request, I have an obligation as the sheriff's office to do with my job. I ordered the investigation to see if they were there in the line of duty, to see if they were acting in their course and scope to make the determination of what I had to turn over to the news media. And, and I'm not going to let anybody twist my words. I never lied about it at all. And, and your camp is saying that, that, that uh, Colonel Fortunato went to a breakfast that was supposed to be um, uh, a breakfast and it turned into uh, to a campaign uh, uh, stop. And you're saying that's skirting the campaign finance rules. Uh, a breakfast. A oh, breakfast, I'm sorry. Uh, are we talking about? Yeah, the, the one at the Kenner School. Oh, that was, that was a food giveaway. A food giveaway, I'm a sorry, a food giveaway, giveaway. A food giveaway at the time, yeah. I mean, I mean, if any business can sit there and, and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever the case may be, if I have a businessman that wants to do a gun giveaway, 
and we uh, can't uh, we disguise it as a campaign rally that's not appropriate it's not appropriate for people to use their 501c3 foundations in order to give food away, disguise it as a fundraiser event, and then do no in-kind donation to the campaign itself. You know, guess what? If it's legal, it shouldn't be. Because if that's the case, then I can have someone give a cash giveaway tomorrow. So you think it's unethical? I, th I do believe it is. Colonel? Absolutely not. In that particular incident, first of all, it was not a fundraiser. CRC, Ronnie Maines, who owns CRC in Kenner, oftentimes does these food distributions. Oftentimes we work together trying to help one another throughout the community for years and years. Well, what happened in that particular time was just an event where we, I reached out to Ronnie to see if he can give us some assistance and help going throughout the neighborhoods of Jefferson Parish, knocking on doors. He said, I have a better idea. I'm give, doing a food giveaway today. If y'all want to come help us do, you know, handle the distribution of the food, hey, come on out and do the same thing. But no one at any point in time from the, from the beginning that we re first rece uh, went out there was where we ever told not to be on the on that school grounds. All right, now you have said and that if we would have been, we certainly would have left. You have said that Joe Lapinto does not have the experience needed to run the sheriff's office. Joe Lapinto should be running for a judgeship at this point, or going back to the state legislature. My 46 years of experience in the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, of knowing what to do and how to do it. I've walked the walk. I've talked the talk. I've stood over the dead bodies. Walked around the shell cases. Been a shoulder to cry on to many when you get outside the crime scene tape, knowing that they trust and believe in me, that they're going to come to me with information that could be vital to our criminal investigation. And you were saying that John Fortunato does not have the administrative capabilities to run this office. Well, I've run the sheriff's office for the last six months. I know it comes across my desk. I know the contracts, the memorandums, the things that I have to deal with. But also, I have the ability to keep anyone safe. Our crime stats are still lower than they've ever been. In 2017, we had the lowest crime stat numbers, and you know what? In January of this past year, we had a 19% reduction over last year's numbers. It's a testament that I do know what I'm doing. I had the opportunity to do so for the last six months. I've been able to prove it. The people have seen who I am, and they're going to make the choice of whether I continue. Now, the latest controversy in this race came on Sunday when, when you guys were doing a debate and you were asked the question, would you, would you ask uh, uh, President Yenny to, to uh, step down? And you said? I did. I believe that he was an ineffective leader. I, I don't believe that uh, the Jefferson Parish deserves a parish president that has been caught in that controversy. Uh, it's a 17-year-old boy that he was dealing with at that point in time. We have to have a lot of problems with our schools, especially in this day and age. We have to collaborate with other agencies. And to have to collaborate with a person that's not allowed on the school campus is a problem. I do believe he should have resigned, and I definitely wouldn't endorse him for another term. And you, you, said, you said that he, he should be allowed to stay, uh, even though most, most politicians, most elected officials in Jefferson Parish have said, Mike Yenny should step down. First of all, I don't condone the activities of Mike Yenny, whether it was texting or whether he was talking to someone or whatever he was doing. I do not condone that. When they did the recall election, you, you saw what the results were. But let me make this perfectly clear. I do not and will not ever endorse Mike Yenny for any election in Jefferson Parish. Didn't you say that night that you would? I said that I would support Yenny. As the sheriff of Jefferson Parish, I understand the importance of what it is to have to work with all parish government officials, whether it's the parish president, whether it's parish council. So I don't want an adversarial relationship. If, if a Category 5 storm is, was, was approaching this area, and we knew that we all had to get together in the same room and talk about what's best for the safety and well-being of the people of Jefferson Parish, I don't want a relationship to be soured at this point. So if I have to work with the parish president, if I have to work with the parish council to do all we can to keep our residents safe and do what's best for the residents of Jefferson Parish, I'm going to do just that. But again, I would never endorse Mike Yenny for any election in Jefferson Parish because I don't condone what he did. And let's both be honest, politics is a big part of this job. Politics is about anything, but I mean, my job is always going to work. That's who I've always been. You know, I've served as the elected official. I've always been the public servant first. You know, politics, you go around. You ask people for your vote. You let them know who you are. Uh, when I ran for office as a state representative, I ran against Harry Lee's nephew. I didn't have the endorsements. I didn't have the money. What I had was qualifications, the same thing I have today. And if we can just get, just, we're about out of time, but I just want to go back to, to why you think you should and why you think he is so wrong and vice versa. Start with you, Sheriff. You know, Wrong is a different story. John Fortunato and I are friends. We've worked down the hall with from each other. You kind of yeah. wouldn't know that from your campaign ads. Oh, well, but the reality <laughs> of it is it comes, down to, it comes down to qualifications. This is a campaign. You know, it, 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 it's not a popularity contest. We're looking at who can lead us to the future of Jefferson Parish. Policing is different. 
Policing is different than it was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I know that because I've seen the progression. I've seen the progression as we go forward. And, and I know what we need from a technology standpoint. Our police officers today have to know about Instagram and Snapchat and all the other things. They can't go to the policing methods that we did back in the 90s. And I think they're. Are you saying he's too old? Well, I'm not saying he's too old, but I understand that I was a police officer more recently than he was. Okay. Well, it certainly doesn't make a difference. The fundamentals of what you learn when you come out of the training academy after, after you've spent all those months in, in you know, learning what you do, picking up what you have to do. Once you, but once you get on the streets, it never changes. Go, I, we, I'm smart enough to know we cannot go back to doing policing like in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But what we need to do is move this department into the future, making certain that we provide the best training, the best equipment, the best technology for the men and women of this organization. You know, every morning I wake up and I sit and, and, and read on my iPad, IACP News, Louisiana Sheriff's Association, National Sheriff's Association, all the ideas and things that are going, moving this organization forward, and want to apply the things that I read every morning, and I know what I can do best to make this organization and the men and women in the Sheriff's Office Gentlemen, proud. thank you very much. Best of luck to you both. Thank you, Eric. You can still early vote for the election in all the races on March, the March 24th ballot. Early voting ends on Saturday. The election itself is March 24th, and it's a big one in Jefferson. Thank you. It's National Pie Day. We have more